This is a tribute to Benjamin Banneker, a bicentennial tribute, 200 year uh, tribute to Benjamin Banneker. Uh, Benjamin Banneker, who was he? We can go over a list of his accomplishments. Um, firstly, Benjamin Banneker, he was born in 1731 in the 18th century, and he passed in 1806. Good morning, and welcome to another Minority Counterpoint program. This is Gwen Blackburn, your hostess. One of the topics that we don't really give much thought to and have not had a program on is the buildings that are being constructed all along the highways and in the various cities and towns, wherever there is vacant land. It seems that buildings are being constructed. Um, you just say, oh, another building going up, or I wonder what's going up there. Well, there's more to think about than just that. And it's who are the people who are designing and constructing the building? Are any of the designers people of color? And of course, when I think about the Gulf, course, Gulf Coast region and the devastation there, I wonder who's working toward redesigning, especially that well-known Ninth Ward that we keep hearing about. Well, I heard from a man who is planning to bring attention to the question that I've raised. Joseph Edgecombe is, and he will straighten me out, he is a uh, architectural designer, I believe, and is registered in Washington. He's going to tell us about his plans for a black architecture week because he in fact feels and i'm sure it is true that there is a need for such exposure so um this morning joseph is in the studio with me and i i welcome you to minority counterpoint joseph good morning good morning uh and let us begin by having you talk about how you came up with the idea of having an architecture week. You, you're calling it cultural architectural power. Interesting. Uh, tell me what shape that this would take. Um, well, um, the black African American community is uh, a very um, creatively talented uh, resource. Uh, that the different cities, uh, states, towns of the the country has as 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 an asset, asset, and as a, as a resource. So, in order to um, corral and promote um, uh, more people in this field to get more exposure, as well as uh, the young people coming up in the field, uh, I feel that there needs to be some time set aside within the year that people uh, celebrate uh, the um, uh, amount of um, people and in, in, in power that they have within that particular industry. And what, what would it look like? I mean, would they, uh, say a black architectural week, would, would this mean that perhaps there would be an area, a building or, or something <laughs> where all of the designs, I guess you call them designs or, or sketches or, mm -hmm. or whatever, might be exhibited for people to see what black architectures are, are capable of doing? I mean, is that would be part of, of what Black Architecture Week would be? Yeah, that would uh, help um, show um, some of the, the aspirations and whatnot that are coming out of the, the um, black and minority architectural community. Um, also, um, things can be um, connected and included, uh, which could be uh, Boston City School programs, uh, mm. uh, um, kids in, in high school getting ready to launch their, their academic and professional careers, and other uh, junior high school children that want to mm. be involved because they, they're the most, most creative. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it could be uh, broader based than, than, than just um, certain professionals ex exhibiting their works. and. 
Uh, okay. Include everybody. Yeah, that, that that sounds really good. I mean, to get young people in school uh, involved while they're still in school and they can can begin their training and n know what that uh, you need to do to become an architect. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question, uh, Joseph, are there many black architects? And uh, uh, for those that there are, why aren't they being recognized? Uh, th throughout the um, the country, there's a, a few um, uh, prominent architectural firms or um, professionals. Mm -hmm. um, um, in in most major cities, there are um, uh, one or two um, firms that that have sort of uh, become uh, successful. That few, just one or two. Yeah. In a city, wow. Just one or two. The yeah. percentage of, of African American architects is uh, less than one percent that mm. are, that are uh, registered with the uh, Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. based organization uh, with the the, um, the architectural community. Uh, mm. But there's there's many more um, professionals working in uh, in residential areas and uh, helping small business uh, make improvements. Um, and uh, other things that have to do with commu community and city planning. Okay. So there's more than th this, 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 uh, the, the, the one that seems to dominate and sort of neglects every, the other black architects that are out there trying to make it just as well. So are, are most of the black architects then involved, a uh, part of, or working for white, white firms, those that are there, and, and is it difficult to get into the field? Uh, yes, it, well, it's difficult yeah. to uh, to get, get into, into it, and then it's difficult to maintain in in the in the field uh, because of the um, dis disparity b between uh, the amount of whites and the amount of uh, blacks there in the field, and the preference that the uh, the, the white students and the white uh, arch arch architects get. And the problem is, it's also it's an international business field. Oh, really? So there's. Um, the architect for the World Trade Center in, in, in New, uh, York. New York was uh, is the Japanese, mm. and um, the the New World Trade Center building is a German architect who did the was selected for the designer on, on that one. Um, so and also even the Museum of Fine Arts, there's a, uh, a British architect that they're pulling in on the improvements on the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, before building is, is started, I guess the first step, and I don't know anything about architecture, but I would assume that the first step is to, uh, you have to, the, to, to make a sketch or a drawing of, of your plan. Is that the way it works? I mean, and so, uh, people can go to seek out an architect to do the drawing for them, uh, you know, a contractor or something? Yeah, yeah, on a on a, on a uh, residential basis and on a uh, community development basis, um, um, in order to do things by uh, uh, code and regulation, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of improvement on your business, small business, medium, large business, um, everything has to be done according to the the uh, your building code. And um, our professional architects, they they know most of these codes uh, by the back of their hand, uh, so. Um, that it's the best way to stop any kind of problem with the city or any type of uh, thing that has to do with that because your buildings are inspected and all improvements are inspected by the city. So as a way to uh, alleviate any problems with the city or the state, you have to go to an architect and they take care of all the um, necessary requirements for any, 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 any work being done, whether it's a new building or whether it's, whether it's a renovation. And, and are you suggesting then that there aren't very many blacks or or people of of color or whatever that are get a piece of this pie yeah because while the, the needs of the urban environment are mm. uh, extensive so um, I, the problem is the institutions of uh, architecture and design are not facilitating uh, enough uh, 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 of a rally and of a uh, um, a, a way to to channel more more blacks and minorities uh, uh, into the into the field so we can take care of our uh, urban environment uh, from from an architectural perspective 
um, the way the design profession works is it's selective and, and prefer preferential uh, many many times in, in, in education uh, towards the, the the white architect or towards the uh, also there's a problem with the uh, international people that are coming from overseas mm -hmm. um, that often have um, a deep accent or something and they don't even really know about the complications of the country them itself and they're getting uh, preference as well because it's uh, uh, a classism based uh, based profession so are you suggesting then that the people who are coming from other countries who are coming here that because they are from other countries that they have a preference people have a preference over uh, over um yeah the, the, mm. well it is, there are uh, other 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 countries um that um just minority people just like everybody else there could be chinese china uh, Latino uh, 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 countries, South America, or uh, Spain, Spain, European countries, but um, e these these cultures have a uh, talented base, uh, uh, culture and talented uh, artistic base, mm -hmm. and they have a, a, a very progressive base getting involved in the architecture and design field. That's why there's so many people in that field. But also what America has to realize is that, that the domestic economy itself, um, with, within the economy itself of the American economy, is that the black and Hispanic uh, uh, youth that are coming up are also just as creative talented as any other foreign right. culture that, that's, that's, that's there. Right. So they have to promote within themselves in order to help out in, in, in help uh, uh, alleviate the urban problems of our urban em environment uh, uh, in in the, the the dense areas and the populated areas where we need improvement housing, um, um, uh, renovation of uh, uh, different areas and mm -hmm. address of, of of urban um, blight and various things like that. In conclusion, uh, as a tribute to Benjamin Banneker. Uh, we see that his effort was to uplift the uh, black race at, at that time uh, through his experiences because uh, of his uh, the freedom that he had that other people didn't have at this at the time. Uh, but this was continued by several historical figures uh, in the history of uh, the country. Uh, Benjamin Banneker was present during the 18th century. And uh, during the 19th century, we see figures such as Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. But we also see figures such as uh, William Lloyd Garrison, uh, who was, who was um, a Caucasian white male. And um, then uh, in the 19th century, we see our civil rights leaders. And as well, we see other leaders such as uh, Shirley Chisholm, who also uh, uh, ran for president in 1972. Uh, and then if we uh, bring ourselves up to uh, modern times, uh, we see that we have many architects uh, and planners, uh, such as uh, 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 community planners. Uh, we have uh, Michael Washington, he's an outstanding architect. Um, David Lee uh, of the Stullen Lee uh, Company, uh, they're outstanding architects and they all contribute to the, uh, to the development of the country just as Banneker did. In this way, Banneker pioneered uh, many things that we're still fighting for, uh, fighting through today for acceptance in uh, most white-dominated professions. So this is the importance of, uh, of uh, uh, Benjamin Banneker and the efforts is also of uh, William Lloyd Garrison during the anti-slavery movement and uh, Shirley Chisholm in her run for presidency. Mm -hmm.